Our work touches on one of the greatest needs right now in lung transplantation, which is that there are too many patients in need of a transplant and not enough organs available to meet that need. The major opportunities and advancements in transplantation today is the modification of donor organs so we can have not only more organs available for transplantation, but also better organs. Recently, we had two major advances in lung transplantation research. The first one was the development of a new method of lung preservation described by Dr. Ali in our lab. Using the clinical standard of preserving the lungs in an ice cooler, the maximum preservation time is approximately six to eight hours. What we wanted to do is find a way to extend that window from six to eight hours to something beyond that, so even potentially up to a day. Our approach to solving this problem was finding an optimal lung storage temperature. Looking at data from experiments performed over 30 years ago, where lung transplant pioneers looked at very low temperatures all the way to body temperature to see what would be the ideal lung preservation temperature. And what they found unanimously is 10 degrees Celsius outperformed all other temperatures tested. The most uh, challenging part was to try to understand why those lungs that were preserved at warmer temperatures were doing so much better than our gold standard cold preservation in ice. For this project, a key collaboration was with Dr. Anna Andriaza from the University of Toronto. Her lab was able to help us determine mitochondrial health as a key determinant of this 10 degrees preservation technique. Now that we actually have the technology to store lungs at 10 degrees and we know the reasons why, this is really going to allow us to take the window of lung preservation from 6 to 8 hours all the way to 24 to 36 hours. Some of the implications of this are very broad. Some of which include being able to retrieve lungs from longer uh, geographical distances, plan recipient operations. So instead of doing lung transplants in the nighttime, doing them in the daytime. And last but not least, being able to match donor and recipients based on immunological factors. So improving lung transplant recipient outcomes for patients. The next step of moving this work forward is working with a Canadian biomedical device company on organ-specific 10 degrees preservation device to be able to allow this technology to spread to different markets around the world in the US, Europe and Canada. The second advancement uh, was the creation of universal blood type donor lungs, uh, which was uh, described uh, in very much detail by Dr. Wang. The most exciting part is that right now when we receive a donor offer, we have to match the blood type. However, in the near future with this study, we'll be able to choose the sickest recipient on the wait list and transplant with the next organ independent of their blood type. In our research, we used a specific enzyme to cleave off these the antigens that makes them blood type A. So we removed them and then converted them to the universal blood type O. We established collaborations with researchers from University of British Columbia uh, who have developed these enzymes which are very effective to cleave the A antigens from the red blood cells or from the tissue, in this case, in the lungs. I was surprised at how good the enzymes were at stripping off the antigens. Of course, there is the possibility that they will gradually grow back. We still don't know how the modified organs will behave over time. We are establishing experimental models to understand that process a bit better before we go into a clinical trial. The COVID-19 pandemic really motivated us to carry on those experiments because we were seeing that more patients were in need, for example, of lung transplantation and these advancements in donor organ preservation and donor organ modification eventually will benefit all these patients on the wait list.